For today's classic interview, we're piggybacking on some of the automation stories and the recent comments from people like Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking about autonomous weapons. And we're going back to August 21st of 2012 when I interviewed Luke Muehlhauser, who's the executive director of the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence. The topic is, of course, artificial intelligence, the idea of AI being evil or turning against humans and a lot of related topics that are increasingly relevant now, given the discussions of automation and robots in factories, etc. Let's go back to August of 2012 this week. Luke Melhauser is the executive director of the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence. He's also the author of dozens of popular articles on rationality, neuroscience, artificial intelligence. Great to talk to you, Luke. Um, this is a topic off and on that we've kind of broached on, our, on, on my show, and it's a personal interest to me. I think a good place to start for the audience would be when we talk about artificial intelligence, or maybe more specifically, when you talk about artificial intelligence, what, what is under that umbrella, and how might that differ from the kind of colloquial understanding of what AI actually is? Well, there are two forms of artificial intelligence. One is called narrow AI, and that just means a program that is able to figure out how to solve problems in a very narrow domain, like chess or playing the stock market or detecting underwater mines uh, from a submarine for the military. And we have lots and lots of those programs, and many of them are better at what they do than humans and therefore have replaced humans in that capacity in the workforce. Another type of AI is what is now called artificial general intelligence, or AGI, and that is the type of AI that, like humans, is generally capable of achieving goals in the world. So you can drop an AGI in an arbitrary context or even a new environment, and it'll be able to optimize the world according to its preferences It'll be able to go out and achieve its goals, uh, sort of whatever environment you put it in and roughly whatever goals it has. And we don't have AGI yet, but it looks like one day we will. And so the Singularity Institute exists to study the math of AGI uh, possible architectures and try to figure out what they'll do and whether they'll do things that humans want. So anything right now that falls under the, the umbrella of artificial intelligence is not AGI because we've not yet achieved that. That's right. So IBM's Watson, for example, which recently beat Ken Jennings and other Jeopardy players at Jeopardy, is another type of narrow AI. It's a particularly impressive narrow AI, but it still falls under the heading of narrow AI because it's only good at one thing, and that's playing Jeopardy. Is, uh, and then maybe this question is different, would be differently answered based on whether it's a narrow AI or the AGI that potentially is on the horizon. Is artificial intelligence about simulating what we understand to be human intelligence, or is it really something else altogether? Well, that's a really great question because there are many ways to go about building an AGI whether it's 10 years from now or 50 years from now or 100 years from now. One way you might do it is to actually emulate a human brain, just like we can emulate the software of some system, say a Nintendo Entertainment System. You can, em enter, uh, you can emulate that on your computer and you can make it run really, really fast or really slow, but then the games become unplayable. You can do the same thing in principle with the human brain if we knew the structure of the human brain in enough detail, but it would require an enormous amount of computer hardware that I don't think we're going to have any time in the next 40 to 50 years. The other way to do it is to invent a new method uh, for having a generally artificial intelligent agent in the world. So evolution has already produced this one kind of agent that can generally achieve goals in the world, and that's the human. Um, and we could emulate that, but we might find other algorithms, other processes, other math, other information structures that would allow an agent to be generally intelligent in the world. And there are lots of ways to approach that and lots of people working on that problem. Uh, and, and part of it might just be mashing together uh, lots of discoveries that we've made on the particular features of intelligence, like how to look at the world and recognize objects, and how to move in the world, and how to move in dynamic terrain, and how to reason about math problems, and how to reason about uh, interacting with others, and how to reason about the emotional states of others. 
if we get AIs, narrow AIs that are good enough at all at all of those kinds of things that humans regularly do, you might be able to just piece them together and have an AGI. Or it might require some kind of new fundamental math breakthrough. So what's realistically kind of on the horizon in the next five or so, you know, kind of more short term that we will see translated into, you know, either that people will see in consumer accessible devices or at least that we'll be hearing about the research and advancements. Not so much further into the future, but next five years, what might we see? Right. I don't think you'll see AGI in the next five years. So you'll mostly just see relatively gradual improvements in various kinds of narrow AI. So in five years, Siri on the iPhone will be a little bit better. Uh, you'll have lots more robots that can move quickly across unusual terrain like the ones that Boston Dynamics is building for the U.S. military. We'll have breakthroughs in swarm robotics, which means that you have a lot of usually flying robots that can coordinate and not run into each other and also dodge obstacles in the environment on the way to their destination. Um, you'll have better translation software, you'll have AI programs that begin to become uh, competitive with human players on the game of Go, which is a lot harder for computers to play than chess, but they'll, they'll start to become competitive with humans in the next five years. And we'll have self-driving cars, possibly from Google, that will uh, be somewhat better than they are now and actually available for purchase by the public. Let's talk a little bit about this stereotype that exists in a lot of popular media, including movies, including books, which is this idea, this fear that may be rational, may be irrational, that as AI advances, and maybe it's once we get into an AGI, as you mentioned, inevitably artificial intelligence, robots, etc., will turn against humans, will become so-called evil, whatever, whatever evil may be. Is that something that there's any backing for in the scientific community amongst people that are actually doing AI research? Or is there really no reason to believe that humans should be afraid of what would happen if we have an AGI? Well, the robot rebellion idea that AIs will become evil goes way back to the 1921 Czech play that introduced the term robot. Uh, and in that, in that movie, the robots rebel against humanity, and it's been a very common storyline since then in the Terminator, the Matrix, etc. But it's very important when we try to think about what AI will do that we not uh, do what's called generalizing from fictional evidence. <laughs> we don't want to take fictional evidence into account when we're trying to consider what AIs will do. And in particular, we don't want to anthropomorphize artificial intelligence. We humans have a tendency to model other agents as being just like humans but a little bit different. So you get aliens from other worlds light years away in movies being basically just like humans but maybe with big eyes and lasers coming out of their <laughs> fingers or something, you know? Uh, and that's just not respecting the variety of possibilities that there are for having an agent design that goes out in the world and does things. And so if you want to figure out what an AI will do, you can't model it the way you would model a human. You have to actually look at the math of what an AI will do, because AIs are made of math. And you have to look at the math and watch uh, and look at the math and see what it will do. So with AGI in particular, um, AGIs will be the kind of intelligent agents that are able to, you know, that have goals about the world and will go out and try to um, optimize the world for the achievement of, that, of those goals. And when you have a system like that, uh, the AI will probably be motivated by a very uh, specific set of goals. Uh, it's called its utility function for, for the math geeks out there. But uh, these very specific set of goals is what it will care about and it won't care about anything else. And the AI unless it has human common sense in the math of the AI somehow, will not have our normal human sense. And so suppose that a paperclip factory uh, programs the AI to maximize the number of paperclips that it produces. And so then it makes a bunch of efficiency improvements in the factory and has all these robots whizzing around the factory and they run over some humans and kill some people. And then the AI programmers realize, oh, wait, okay, so maximize paper clips and also don't kill humans. <laughs> and so then the AI will start doing that and it won't kill humans, but maybe it runs over and injures some. And so the AI programmers think, oh, we forgot to put that in the math of the AI. Okay, AI, now 
you know, they're typing away, optimize the number, maximize the number of paper clips you produce and don't kill humans and protect humans from harm. Well, as it turns out, humans harm themselves a lot. And so now the AI ties up all the humans and feeds them with feeding tubes. And so the AI programmers are like, oh, no, that's not what we wanted. So we have to go back and program again. And the problem is that to represent what humans actually care about, uh, it sounds simple in, ma in, uh, in English because we all have common sense about things like, oh, and also don't kill humans. But it's very, very complicated to put human goals into math and very difficult to do that. And so if you have the math just a little bit wrong, then the powerful artificial general intelligence will be pursuing goals that are slightly at cross purposes to you. And that's a big problem because humans do that all the time. We have cross purposes with each other and sometimes we kill millions of other humans, but it never gets so bad that we uh, like wipe out the entire species or something like that because in the end, even Hitler can be killed with a single bullet and we're not that much more powerful than each other. But an artificial general intelligence could copy itself across the internet, make billions of copies of itself, um, do new science and invent new weapons technology. Uh, it could have a brain the size of a warehouse instead of what's restricted to the human skull. So when you've got a powerful system like that that is trying to achieve goals that are just slightly different from your own, it becomes very worrisome for the creature that is now the lesser of the powers in the world. All right. Fascinating stuff. We've been speaking with Luke Melhauser, Executive Director of the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence. Really great to speak with you, and we'll definitely have you back. Great to be here.